Okay, Aiden, I'm going to talk through your routine here as you do these. I'll be doing some slow motion and showing you some, uh, some still images to try to clean some of this stuff up. But we start on uh, floor exercise here in the judge's cut. I'm going to let this run for a moment. All right, Aiden, let's go, big guy. Come on, bud. Okay, dive roll. Step to cartwheel close, back row extension, straddle stand, press to your handstand, hold and pipe down. So let's let's look at that for a moment. I'm gonna back it up a little bit. <clears throat> let's come back over here. Okay, and we'll let this run on down here. Remember that we want you to take a couple of breaths before you start, Aiden. Okay, and then that first few seconds before you start, you should be thinking about that first skill, okay, and about this arm swing that you want to use on your dive row. Good, strong, Ron, good arm swing, and a Superman. Remember, with your head up and your arms out, lift those heels, try to make sure that you land in the handstand. So let's see what that looks like. Let's run this forward. Good aggressive run. Oops, but you're doing, see the arm swing here? Your hands are up. This is a skip step for a round off or a front hand sprint. You should be using your arm drag like you do for vaulting here. Okay, the arm should be back here, not up above your head. So when you land with your on two feet with your hands up, you've got no hands to lift, okay, or to swing forward. See, let me switch from this to uh, PowerPoint here. It's going to be going in the other direction, but see how his arms are back here? On his last step, he swings his arms back so that he can, lean, he can swing them forward here into the Superman position on the takeoff. Okay, you see that? So you take off here with the arms swinging forward. That allows you to push really hard against the floor as your arms are pushing upward. And that'll let you get really, really nice and high into the Superman position. And when you land, we want to land here close to a handstand and roll out of it. So let's look at that. Let's go back to the video. Here's your arm swing. Here's your landing. Your arms are up, you see. We don't want that. Okay, this looks pretty good. You're leaning forward slightly from the ankles. Looking for that Superman. Okay, you're not really showing the Superman. You're here at the apex already. Okay, you're at the highest part of your flight. Your arms are still down. Your heels are not up in the Superman. And your head is beginning to drop already. So you're not showing off that Superman position. And right about here, your hands have touched down. And we're not in the handstand position. You want to have those heels and hips and shoulders above your hands when you land here. Okay, so pretty good form on the roll. Feet are slightly flexed. Okay, heads dropping back a little bit on that roll. Keep the neck muscles tight so that you don't get that whiplash. Here you need to stand up completely, Aiden. Okay, your hands are still down, but you're not doing the skip step. Okay, so we've corrected that. Okay, you want to show that good posture and hands up here before you go into this. Let's see about the body length on your cartwheel. Not too bad. Okay, that looks pretty good to that point. Nice and extended here. But here, see how you're stepping down close to your hand? Boom. Okay, that's not half the body length there. We need to be continuing to push away from your right hand here. So you take a bigger step away from your cartwheel. And here you're just dropping your feet and leaving your hands down. You're not, you're not teeter-tottering here, okay? Here's your foot touching down, boom. And look where your body is. When that foot touches down, you should be standing up, okay? We miss that, all right? And now you're sitting down and you haven't begun to sit back from a nice high position because you never did get into that high, nice high position. So this is gonna make your back row extension harder. Here's your back row. This looks awesome, okay? The uh, head position, this is that, you know, rock and roll thing up to the handstand, and this looks really good. 
except that your hands are not turned to the inside. Your little fingers are not touching and your arms are not straight here. So you're not get your, getting virtuosity for your straight arm back to the road. Although this is pretty close, but we need to turn those hands in. Okay, the head's popped out a little bit in the handstand. Okay, good here, good position here on your uh, front support. Looks really nice. Let's see about the stand up. Okay, slight bent knees there on the stand up. And we want to be able to pop right up to a stand, Aiden. We don't want to have our hands and our feet on the floor at the same time. We want to be able to pop to a stand and stand all the way up in your straddle stand. Let's see where you get to, right here. Okay, we want to go all the way up to a stand. Then you bend over. Okay, so you're holding this as your, your straddle stand. That's okay, but we want to show a standing position first with the arms up. Press here look pretty good. A little short on the hold. And your feet could be pointed there a little better. The head is up. Arms are fairly straight though, but I, I still want you to have a straight line from your hands to your hips here. You're leaning forward a little bit and that head is up. You're playing it safe here. You've got to go ahead and push yourself tall. Okay, Handstand position itself looks pretty good, except that the head is still popped up and you're behind your hands. You see that? You're on the heels of the hands. Uh, Two-second hold is what's desired there. If you don't have a two-second hold, you're going to have uh, a, uh, a deduction, I believe. I'll clarify that in a moment. Pike down is a little loud. You want to come down softly. Okay. So that's the end of the first pass. Let's look at the second pass. Okay. We'll go full speed on this. Go strong now. That's a guy. Okay. Not too bad there. Let's pull this back a little bit. And let's talk about that pass. All right. Second pass. Begins with a run to a hurdle step. And again, I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint for a moment. Let's pull this down. Look at the, <clears throat> the uh, handspring position. Come over here a little bit. Okay. So in this front handspring, we want a nice low and long hurdle step. Nice and extended. You want to push your hips as your hands are touching the floor. Push your hips away from your hands. So you're going up through the handstand, looking at your hands. Keep your hands back. And you should keep those hands back, both of them, in a handstand position as you leave the floor. Um, when you rebound, you should be in a straight body position with the arms up and your head should still be back. You don't want that head to be pulled forward, cut forward like a, a forward roll here. Okay? And that'll give you that good rebound. So let's go back to the video. And let's look at that. This run and skip step was pretty aggressive. Looks, looks really good. Hands are up. Lean forward. Pretty long hurdle step. Okay, now your first foot down is touching, but look where the second foot is, Aiden. Boom. That, that's not a half a body length. I want you to take a little bit bigger step there. And look where your hands are. You're reaching down right in front of your foot. Instead of keeping that body line from your, your foot to your hand straight. You remember the little drill we did with the bungees, the shot cords the other night? I want you to keep that cord nice and long, okay? Don't bend over like this because when you do, okay, this looks pretty good though. Here, you've recovered pretty nicely. You got a straight line from your hands through your shoulders and your hips up to the leg, but you're pulling your head forward right here. See the head coming forward? And you're pushing off with one arm and just dropping your right arm to the side. Okay? And you're breaking form here. We need to keep those legs straight. You should be landing with both arms up instead of one arm up and one arm down. <clears throat> and if you do it properly, you'll land upright at this point. You won't be leaning back like this. Okay? Fake the rebound a little bit. Okay? The arm should still be up here. Okay, again, you're not standing up after that uh, front handspring. We need to be nice and tall here with our hands overhead. A little bit of a short step, a little bit of a short reach. But again, you're pushing pretty good here and up towards your handstand, except that your head's going to be out. Okay, 
Looks like you're starting with a reverse pirouette first, which is fine. You can do either forward or reverse pirouette. Okay, we need to close those feet together though before you start turning, okay? Okay, so you lost some, probably two or three tenths on the handstand uh, with the feet apart and the head popped up like this. See that head stuck out? We've got to get that push tall, Aiden. Okay. It's costing you probably three tenths. Okay, pretty good sisson. Okay, it would be better if you could show uh, more of a split. You got about a right angle here. Uh, a right angle is look at what they're work looking for. Uh, it, it, actually, if you can get beyond a right angle, you get virtuosity on this leap. So we want a little bit more split shown with that front leg. Lift that left leg in front of you when you do this split leap on, on the sisson. Then step forward and turn. Turn look good. Okay, and we're going to go to regular speed again here on the last pass. Okay, round off that can spring, that can spring, and let's stop that. Let's pull that back. Take a look at this pass, slow mo. So here's your run. Again, your run looked pretty aggressive. I like this. These are good hard steps. You're leaning forward, pushing with your your buttocks, your, your gluteal muscles. This is great. Good arm swings. Here's your skip step. This looks good. Okay, that's terrific. Good push with your foot here. You're still, you should be pushing yourself forward with this back foot. And it looks to me like you're not pushing very much. Your butt's stuck out behind you here. Okay. I want you to push a little bit more with that rear leg. Rear foot is your reaching down, and you are reaching down here instead of rotating. See how your hands are dropped already? Okay. Again, you're recovering pretty well here, but if you keep your body long as you rotate, you will have a lot more power on both your round off and on your front handspring. Okay. This looks pretty good. Head's popping up a little bit. I see where you land on the landing. Okay, the feet are down. This is not too bad. Your hips are right above your feet, but your chest is in front of your feet here. We want to be back in that power position when you land here, okay? Knees are going forward because you didn't quite make that position, and this is what's killing your back handspring. See those knees going in front of your feet? Okay, so you lost power during this back handspring, and those legs are all bent up, eh? and you're losing probably three-tenths on this back handspring. The snap down is short again, okay? The chest is way down, the knees are in front of the feet because of rolling those knees at the end of your back handspring, okay? So the next back handspring is even worse, okay? Uh, legs are bent again here, and you're not really going anywhere. Your arms are bending pretty, you know, you're absorbing here. So not much of a rebound. A little fake jump, a step, probably three-tenths on the step. Okay, so that's the end of the floor routine. I figured that you gave up, um, let's see, on the dive roll, probably three tenths. On the cartwheel, three tenths. The back roll extension, a tenth. A seven tenths all together. A tenth on the straddle stand. Uh, a tenth on the press handstand. Uh, came to pike down a little loud, a tenth on that. So that's one point we're down. Front handspring, you probably lost a tenth. Full pirouette, probably three tenths. Um, Sisson looked pretty good. The round off back handspring, back handspring, three tenths on each of those. So that's somewhere around 1.8, something like that, that you lost on your form. Uh, we can certainly do better. Uh, it was not a bad routine, but you know, 1.3 added to whatever you scored on floor. Let's see what that was. 1.8 added to floor. We had a 9.6. Okay, so 1.8 would put you somewhere up in the 11.4 uh, area, okay, which would be awesome, okay. Um, so that's what we're going to be shooting for, buddy. Somewhere up in the low 11s, okay, would be something that you, you could quite possibly do, okay. 
Uh, that's almost two points just on floor exercise, baby. So let's, let's be aggressive. Let's get those back handsprings straightened out. That's hurting. Uh, get that front handspring straightened out, and you'll be well, well on your way doing uh, much better on floor exercise. Okay, so let's go ahead to, uh, to mushroom. Okay, big guy. Those look pretty good. A little, a little bit of pike going on here. Not open, as we, not as open as we got. Players look pretty good. Pretty good dismount. Let's back that up a little bit. <clears throat> So on the circles here, you need to be leaning harder to the right here so that you can open your hips up. You should have a straight line from your right shoulder through your hips to your feet. Uh, this is not too bad, but you got a little pike going on and your hips are kind of between your, your forearms. And, you know, this, is, this is not you know considered to be real open circles. I should be able to see your feet. Uh, on the other side, your heels on the other side. Instead, I'm all, all I'm getting is your body, your bottom here. Okay, let's look at this side. Same thing. A little pike going on. You're not leaning to the left, so your circle is not very big. We got to open these up a little bit. We're going to do that by doing some more uh, work on the bean bag or uh, circles with the bean bag or some other object between your hands, and also trying to get you to do some some loops and back loops and circles on the, the floor palm of horse. Okay, so let's look on at this. We gotta open these up. So you're, you're keeping your shoulders right on top of the horse instead of leaning. Lean left, lean right, lean forward, lean back. And, and the bigger you make that circle with your head, the bigger the circle will be with your feet and your hips. Okay, now we're about to uh, go into the spindle. right about here okay so there's almost a quarter turn and another quarter turn not too bad those actually you improve your circles during that Aiden okay and now we're about to break into your flare okay one legs coming up but see how your hips are down there again from your right shoulder through your hip to your right foot, we should have a nice straight line here, okay? Also see how your, uh, your left foot is flexed? They're gonna hit you for that, okay? Let's compare that image to uh, the image in the, uh, the illustrations, okay? See here, this is where we want a straight line from your shoulder through your hip to your bottom foot then you should be doing a straddled circle in front and then a straight line from your left shoulder to your uh, left hip through your foot here on the opposite side. So that's the type of action that we're looking for. It should be balanced or a mirror image from here through here to here. Okay, let's go back to that video <clears throat> and we'll, we'll go on. So again, you're, you're just a little bit tight that looks pretty good. It's a little piked. I'd like to see you a little more open. Let's check, take a look at this side. Okay, again, the hips are down a little bit. We're going to open that up a little bit more and get that, that top leg a little bit higher with pointed feet instead of flat feet. Okay, then we've got another flare and the half circle with the quarter turn. Okay, a little bit of problem on the landing there. But not, not a bad set, Aiden. We just need to swing a little bit bigger and clean form up a little bit on the, uh, on the flares, your feet on your flares, okay? <clears throat> not too bad of a set. So let's go on to steel rings. Okay, and we know now that you want to hang with almost straight arms. You do have to keep a fox grip, but you don't want those elbows bent as much as we bend them. Pretty good L-set. 
pretty good drop back, good pot time. Try to get it horizontal and feed it pointing down a little bit. No effort, uh, no attempt made at the back lever. We've got to get that. Not a bad cast. Look at your hands though. Okay. We've got high bar hands instead of turning those hands out. So let's back that up. <clears throat> Okay, so we're going to run on through this in slow-mo. Okay, so from here, once you get your fox grip, we want to try to hang down almost with straight arms, but you have to maintain that fox grip, okay, when you're hanging. Okay, so from here, you need to extend straight arms, and then you start the, the muscle up. So you have to show that pull-up action to here, okay? And then from here, of course, it turns into a dip. Keep those hands under your shoulders. Don't let the elbows go to the outside, okay? And we need to get this solo so we can get that five tenths bonus. A lot more pull-ups and dips and more attempts at, at muscle-ups will make this happen. This looks pretty good. Your hands should be turned out a little bit more. Those rings need to look like parallel bars. Okay, they're turned in and they're actually up against your, your uh, upper thigh, and they're going to do that for that. Okay, good head position, chest is up, all, all that looks good, it's just your arms are not turned out enough. Okay, good L set position, but the same problem with the hands, those hands need to be turned to the outside. Okay. <clears throat> they should, the ring should not be touching your legs and the strap should not be touching your arms. Good long hold, I believe. This is slow-mo, so then we're going to straighten back out <clears throat> and then drop back into your pike inverted hang. This is not bad, but see how low your feet are here? You want to keep your legs horizontal when you're in your pike inverted hang, okay, and face into the knees. And from here, we want to open the hands to an undergrip and extend your back lever. Man, do we need that back lever. Instead, we're just going straight down into the German hang. You want to lift your heels here. Okay, this is as open as you're going to get, I believe. We want those heels lifted behind you so that you straighten out your body completely, okay? And you'll get possibly get virtuosity for showing that extended position. Okay, the pull back out, that's a little bit better. The pull back out, the head should go down to the shins. You go back into your pipe, your tight pike inverted hang, and then your shoulders should go up towards the rings when you cast on this. Instead, you're just swinging and your arms are staying completely straight, okay? We got to go up, okay, on this cast so that your shoulders rise. On your back swing, this is as high as it gets, right about there, which is not too bad, okay. Your, your feet are as high as your shoulders, okay, but your head is not down and your hands are not turned to the outside. So they're going to do that for this, okay. Probably just a tenth, but every tenth, you know, counts. And you're going to do three of these swings, so this is going to be, you know, at least three tenths, maybe more. They want that head down, they want those hands turned to the outside, okay? On your front swing, okay, we want the hands to uh, pull to the outside and your feet and your hips should be above your shoulders, okay? And you're not getting the turnover that they want, so they're going to hit you again a tenth or maybe even two tenths on this. We've got to show turnover. Point your feet and your hips like a free hip circle turn upside down, okay? If you don't do that, they're going to deduct for it. Deduction again with the head position and the hands position. Deduction again for the feet not being invert, uh, inverted. Deduction again for the head position and the high bar hands. You've got to turn those hands out. And then the flyaway. All right, now the flyaway, your knees and your hips should not pass between your hands, okay? You want to be rising here instead. The shoulders should be going up. Instead, your shoulders are staying right below the rings. You're still holding on, still holding on. 
still holding on, still holding on, okay? This is a tough skinned cat. It's not a flyaway, and they're killing you for this. Probably five tenths on your tough flyaway. Okay, no stick on the landing. <clears throat> so those are the comments on, on the rings. Okay, Aiden, we're running on now to uh, to vaulting. Um, gonna let this run first, so vault. Come say hi. Aiden, that was a pretty good vault. Um, <clears throat> let's talk about it. I'm going to run it in slow motion here. <clears throat> I'm going to raising your hand, stepping up. He had a really good, strong run here. Accelerating, good arm action, good knee and uh, leg action. Okay, you might be able to go a little faster, but this was a, a pretty good looking run, I thought. Slowing up just a little bit here on your last step. Here's your hurdle. It looks like from this point to the board was a good body length, which is a good, a good distance to go. You're slightly back on the board here on your landing. I'd like you to be maybe another six inches forward, but that's not too bad. The problem with this landing position, <clears throat> Aiden, is that your hands are already coming up. Um, You've done kind of what you did on your dive roll on floor exercise. You've swung your arms up almost like you were doing a skip step for a round off or for a front handspring. The hands are uh, up in the air here, you see. And what we want is we want your hands to be rising as you land on the board, but not quite to this point. Okay? So if we can get a little better arm drag, and that arm drag should look something like this. Let me look at the action here. Here's the arm drag. As you're landing on the board, the arms should be back, but they should be swinging forward as you're pushing down with your feet. Okay? So the arms should be coming up as you take off. Okay? Um, let's see. Let's go back to the video. So here's your takeoff. Let's watch the rise. Hips are still going up. This is about the highest point right about here. Looks like you're even with that blue curtain behind you. Okay, so this is the apex, and you're halfway through the salto, which is excellent. Uh, feet are a little bit flat here, and your hands should be touching your knees or your thighs or your shins, something. You try to want to try to make contact at the very top of your salto if you can. That kind of shows off the fact that you are at the apex, and we want the judge to realize that, okay? So you're not really touching here, uh, and you're on your way down. This looks good. The head is in a good position. Your head is not thrown back. Your back is not arched. You have a good tuck position here. I would like to see your body opening here a little bit more instead of riding it all the way down to the floor but this is a pretty good extension. I'd like to see your hands forward here, Aiden, um, so that um, both hands are balanced. Looks like you've got your right hand somewhat forward and your left hand a little bit back. So that we want your hands both slightly forward. Good landing though, a little hot, probably three tenths on the landing. So by and large, that was a pretty good, uh, pretty good ball. One thing we need to correct here, just a small thing, is you're doing what we call the newbie shuffle, okay, or the newbie swivel, okay? Once you land on your feet, don't swivel around. Land, hands up, hands down. Then you can take a step to face the judge instead of doing this little swivel here. I'm going to back it up so you can see that. This is what we call the newbie or new gymnast swivel, okay, on the landing. I'm going to let it run now. You're landing and you're just kind of swiveling on your feet, okay? Let's go to parallel bars now. I'll back this up just a little bit so we can see that first swing. I'm going to let it run full speed, and then we'll back it up and talk about it. Forward swing, backward swing, forward swing, backward swing, uprise, forward swing, front uprise. 
swing and L sit. And then three swings to a dismount. One, two, three, and a dismount. Whoops, we took an extra swing there. Okay. Actually, a swing forward and a swing backward. All right, so that hurts. And you did the newbie shuffle again there with the judge. Okay, so let's back this up and look at it in detail. Okay, we're going to look at it in slow motion so we can pick it apart. Here's your forward swing. Okay, you've jumped to the bars. You should be nice and extended here. Okay, um, your feet are a little bit flexed and your knees are bent. Of course, you do have to bend them when you swing through the bottom, but we want to bend them at the last possible second. Okay, let's look at the forward swing. Forward swing, good little pump, good tap swing, and the knees are extending. That's pretty good. I'd like to see your arms extending a little bit more too. You need to be pulling backward here, almost like you're trying to go up for a flyaway, like a fling. Okay, so we need to uh, work on that a little bit. Backward swing. Okay, this looks pretty good. You're bending the knees at the right spot, but you're flexing your feet again still here, Aiden. Okay, we don't want those feet flexed. We want them pointed. Only the knees should be bent here through the bottom of your swing. You're actually flexing three joints here. The ankles are flexed, the knees are flexed, and in just a moment, you'll see that the hips are flexed as well. Actually, you didn't do it here. Okay, this looks pretty good. This is a pretty good back swing. And your shoulders are as high as the bars. That's excellent. We'd like your hips to get up as high as the bars too on this back swing. Okay. And you're pretty close to that. Okay, so that's really not too bad of a back swing, Aiden. Let's feet again are slightly flexed. Swinging through the bottom again. Here's where you begin to bend the hips. Okay, so your feet are flexed. Your knees are beginning to flex and you're flexing the hips. Okay, you want to extend again in front and really pull as high as we can. That's as high as you get. Okay, it's nice to see your legs up there above the rails. That's good, but we want the shoulders up there too. And here's on the back swing where you flex the hips apparently. So good tap swing again. Knees are flexed, feet are flexed, and here's where your hips are flexed. We don't want those hips to flex here. And your feet are beginning to separate here as well, Aiden. Okay, they're going to notice that and they're going to duck for it. Okay, so here's your uprise. Look how high your shoulders are here, Aiden. This is really an excellent uh, back uprise. Okay, your hips are well above the bars. I'm sorry, your shoulders are well above the bars. Your hips are about bar height. If you'd sacrifice a little bit of that hip rise, let's see, it continues to go up here, okay? and let your shoulders rise as well, you could get your shoulders and your hips and maybe even your legs at bar height and that would be really impressive looking. So we need to let your entire body rise on that back up rise, not just your shoulders, okay? And we've got to keep better form. They're gonna hit you about five tenths on this position here, Aiden. Look at those legs, okay? Here's the layaway to upper arms. Your forward swing looks pretty good. I'd like to get those hips up above bar height, if you could. Here's your back swing. This looks pretty good too. Bar height above would be really good. And then the front uprise. And on this front uprise, Aiden, uh, you're not getting the front uprise, you're doing the baby uprise, but you're also really seriously breaking form on this. Okay, the knees are bent, hips are bent, Okay, and you're kind of muscling your way up here. Um, th they're going to count this as a five-tenths fall on the apparatus because it looks like a fall on the apparatus. Okay, the legs should be straight and have good form if you do that baby front uprise. You can't just flop on the bars like this without penalty. Okay, so we do want to get a front uprise, but we don't want to do a baby uprise that has this type of a, a form break on it. So here's the uprise. Here's your back swing. This looked pretty good. Bar height. And your L sit. The L sit looks good. 1001, 1002, 1003. Your back swing, again, bar height. On your forward swing, I'd like to see you be shooting for that crab action. Get those shoulders. Uh, get those hips, I should say, through the arms and try to get the hips and legs as high as your shoulders in front. 
Instead, you're piking a little bit here. Your feet are way up, but your hips are down. Okay, we need to press those shoulder blades together and back and open your body up in front. Okay, go for that crab position. On your back swing, you should be able to swing to a handstand. Okay, after a forward swing, if you're you know, a decent gymnast, you should be able to swing to a handstand here, at least a nominal handstand. Um, instead, you're letting your weight shift back to the heels of your hands and you're having difficulty in getting close to the handstand there. Same thing again on the front swing. Okay, that's a little bit better. Your hips are almost the size of your shoulders, but I'm not seeing the dip in your shoulder that you need to really swing to an easy handstand. Relax your shoulders, let your body sink, and you'll be able to swing to the handstand more easily. Okay, drive those heels and click it. Instead, we're taking an extra swing here. So when you're not doing the dismount here on your third swing, instead you're taking a swing forward. That's a three-tenths deduction. This is another two-tenths deduction for five-tenths total for those extra swings. Almost have the nominal handstand, but you, at level five, you actually have to swing to the handstand and hold it to get the bonus. So you're not getting the bonus here. Slight leg separation there on the dismount but I think they're going to count that as a stick and there's that swivel again remember we want to do hands up hands down then you turn and face the judge okay okay Aiden on these p-bar swings that we were talking about I wanted to point out <clears throat> the, the aspects that we're looking for so from your jump here to a hang you want to stay extended and keep these toes pointed as you swing through the bottom only your knees should be bent, the hips should be straight, the, the ankles or feet should be pointed, and then you swing through, and we want to come way up here. Get your armpits as high as the bar, just like you do at the end of an undershoot on high bar. You want, you want to open with your body above the bar with your armpits as high as the bar right here. Then in your back swing, again, as you begin to swing backward, uh, the knees bend, but the hips stay straight and the feet stay pointed so that you're here when you swing through. And again, on the back side, we want to swing and get the arm pits as high as the bars on the back swing. If you can get higher than that, and you can, up into this area, you're going to get some virtuosity. Okay? Then we swing forward again. Let me see if I can pull this back over a little bit. Scroll down, scroll down a little bit. Here's your forward swing again. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, and your backward swing. We want to get up here above the rails, well above the rails, and we're going to get virtuosity for that. Okay? And then the same thing's true on your upper arm swings. Okay, so here's your upper arm swing. Uh, once you put your upper arms down and you're swinging forward, we're going to get above the bars here. You don't necessarily have to fold like this, but you can. You want to swing forward, and then on your back swing, we want to swing so that you get above the bars back here on the back swing. Then we're going to swing for the front up rise. Scroll this down a little bit and bring it back over so you can see the front up rise. Here's your forward swing to the up rise. You want to make sure that you don't pull with your arms and we don't want to straddle on the bars if we don't have to, like this. This is the straddle forward up rise. We want to do that forward up rise. And uh, Aiden, you've got the power to do this. You've got the, the pushing technique. You've got the, uh, the power in your swing to do a front uprise. You're one of the guys who has the best front uprise uh, mechanics. So we should be doing this. We should be getting this bonus. And it is a five-tenths bonus. We want that. Uh, another bonus that we're missing is not doing an L-sit. You have a great L-sit but doing the V-sit instead. And if we can get above 45 degrees, you're going to get that V-sit. So we need to continue to work on that V-sit. Um, what else? The swing to the handstands that we've talked about. You know, you're quite capable of doing that. So let's go on to your next event. We'll go back to regular speed for high bar. High bar, as you well know, was a disaster. Okay, and part of this is my fault because I told you to just to repeat the routine. Okay, which is a no-no. But I wanted to see I wanted to see you do, you know, the, the whole routine. Now, I think you uh, would have uh, done a pretty good job if you hadn't had the, the extra swings and the uh, at the end of the at the end of the routine. You did swing much better. 
but we'd already blown it. Uh, sometimes when we blow a routine, I'm, I'm not going to tell you, you know, to, to, uh, cover up and try to, you know, uh, salvage a routine that's already been busted. We figured, I figured anyway, that your score was going to be a six, five or something like that. If you continued the routine from where you dropped off. Uh, so I just had you repeat it from that point and try to redeem yourself. Uh, and you did pretty well at that. So let's go on. Let's look at the route. How about we team first? Watch out, Marcus. Marcus. Hello. And then we'll uh, we'll go back and we'll uh, talk about the tickets. Let's go around Facebook. So you blew the back hip circle, took some extra swings, broke form on the half turn, broke form on the hand change, took an extra swing there before you kept. And I just told you to get off the bar. All right, so we got off, and during this period, I just told you to repeat the routine just to start over instead of uh, working from the kit. All right, so here's the real routine, right? Pull over was a bit better form. Flat feet a little bit. A good cast of horizontal or almost horizontal hip circle, decent undershoot. Turn, we did not turn again. So that's extra swing, extra swing, five tenths, five tenths split on the form, five tenths split again on the leg during the change. Okay, the kip's going to cost you if your coach helps, it's 1.0 in deduction. Kind of a lame undershoot again, you didn't pull with your arms. We got to be more aggressive on that. There's two extra swings. And slight step on the dismount. So uh, let's look back at it. Pull it back here a little bit to the beginning of this set. And we'll talk about individual pieces. So the pull up and pull over. And the first pull over, you bent your knees. This one looked a little bit better. Slightly flex feet, maybe a tenth off. And you're fidgeting a little bit here once you get to the front support, Aiden. I want you to get to the front support and immediately fold one time and cast. And we want to go to horizontal. Get your feet as high as your shoulders. 45 degrees would get you virtuosity. Okay? We're trying to get to the handstand eventually. All right? Feet are a little flexed here. Your feet are about as high as your hands or bar height. Um, not high enough, okay? Here's your hip circle. Pretty decent hip, hip circle this time. And the undershoot here, nice and high. Feet are split slightly, okay? And your head is back. Aiden, we want to keep this head still on this undershoot, okay? You're extending here much better. Your shoulders are almost as high as the bars, okay? So this is a pretty decent swing. Back swing, and here should be a tap swing to a half turn, but you're not doing the half turn, okay? So this is going to cost you five tenths again for the extra forward swing and the backward swing, okay? So that's an extra swing. This is an extra swing. Here's your half turn, and the legs are splitting. That's a five tenths break, Aiden, okay? If you just swing forward and, and begin turning the legs on the way up, with the hips, with the shoulders, instead of just pulling with your arm and turning your head, your legs won't split like that, okay? So we've got to work on cleaning this up. This is a huge break that we can avoid. All right, legs back together. And then on the grip change, legs are splitting again here, okay? Probably three-tenths on that split. And it's kip now, 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 no kip, okay? So, again, an extra swing backward, an extra swing forward. Do we kip now? Yes, here's the kip. All right, and you're bringing those legs all the way up. We've talked about this. We need to keep those feet down at the end of the front swing and then bring them up as you begin the back swing on your kip. I think we've about corrected that. Breaking form here, and you're getting a spot, so you probably lost about 1.3 on that. And we've got no immediate cast, so we're not getting the bonus for the immediate cast. Undershoot again. Okay, this is a pretty decent undershoot. We need to pull a little bit more at the arms so that the armpits get as high as the bar. Uh, 
And once you get some confidence in these grips, you'll be able to do that with a, a little more uh, gamba style work. So here we go. Here's your back swing one, form break, tap swing forward, back swing two, form break again, a tenth, back swing three, and this should be the dismount. Form break again, but you didn't dismount. Extra swing forward, extra swing backward, and the dismount. Okay, slight step on the dismount, three tenths probably, and the swivel again. So we've got to work on that landing, uh, but certainly we've got to get rid of the extra swings. You got to know this routine better than this. Um, so let's go on. Let's talk about high bar. Uh, bonuses as well. Let's go to the high bar event. Um, pull this down a little bit so we can see the cast uh, requirements. Um, on high bar, after your pullover, if you can cast to 45 degrees or above, okay, uh, take that back. If you, Yeah, if you can cast to 40, 45 degrees above horizontal, you get one tenth back in virtuosity. Okay, right now you're casting with your feet down here in this area, okay, which is uh, feet about bar height, and we want that to be well above that if you want to get virtuosity. Then, then we do the back hip circle as a free hip circle instead. Right now you're, you're just doing the back hip circle, and again, you've got really good swing mechanics, you should be able to do a free hip circle here uh, to horizontal or feet as high as your shoulders when you open up and that's going to get you that five tenths bonus that we want. On the undershoot, pull this over a little bit more, here's the undershoot. Okay, we want to turn upside down and once we turn upside down we want to pull with our arms so that when we extend our arms we're up in this area with the shoulders and the body as high as the bar. Okay, Then you'll be able to do your backward swing way up here above the bar and swing to a half turn that's up here above the bar like AJ is doing and you'll get virtuosity for that. Okay, um, And of course we don't want to break form on this turn. Uh, I think working you on some blind changes will, uh, will help you with that so we're going to begin to work that a little bit. Um, and we've got to get that kip in there. Here's that kip that we're shooting for. That's going to, you know, uh, it'll meet the requirements that you have for this routine. That is required. Um, and it looks like the, the spot, by the way, for assistance is just 5 tenths, not 1.0, as I mentioned uh, earlier in the video. But we want to be able to do that kip so that we can kip and cast immediately and do another undershoot. Okay, um, then we want to be able to add that baby giant. Okay, let's pull that on over so we can take a look at that. We want to be able to do an undershoot and a backswing to a baby giant. Here's the baby giant, and that will add five tenths to your routine. Then uh, a few backswings to uh, ideally a flyaway is what we'd like to be able to do. Bring this down in size a little bit. So if we can eliminate that drop to a stand and substitute a flyaway instead, we're going to add another five tenths to your routine. So we've got a lot of options here, or a lot of uh, potential for adding uh, to your high bar score. The uh, the free hip circle would add five tenths. The baby giant would add five tenths. The flyaway would add five tenths. And uh, Aiden, you're capable of doing all of these. Uh, I know the flyaway is scaring you right now, but uh, I don't. I don't expect this for the next meet. We'll stay with the, the drop, but you're certainly able to, uh, I think, add the, uh, the baby giant, the kip, and the free hip circle and clean up that, uh, that swing to the half turn and eliminate all these extra swings. And, you know, your score is just going to boom. I mean, you're going to add uh, easily three to four points to your high bar score. Uh, put you up there in the in the in the nines, the high nines. Um, so this should be a, a nice uh, a nice upgrade for you. 
Anyway, uh, all in all, not a bad meet. We had a bad high bar. We had really uh, much worse form than I've seen you do on, on parallel bars. But your floor and uh, mushroom uh, were pretty good. Your rings was pretty good. Your vault was pretty good. P-bars and high bar, uh, we can improve on dramatically. So we're looking for a better score next time, and I know you're going to provide it. All right, buddy.